Hello everyone. In this video, we will look at how to expertly solve circuits with DC ammeter. We will discuss how to construct a DC analog ammeter using a galvanometer, given galvanometer coil ratings and the desired full scale reading. We will also see how to work out the effective resistance of an ammeter and use it to calculate the percentage error in the measured current. The block diagram of an analog ammeter is shown here. It consists of a galvanometer coil in parallel with a resistor RA. The coil is characterized by both a voltage rating and a current rating and these ratings are typically in millivolt and milliamp. For example, the coil rating can be 50 millivolt and 1 milliamp. This means that when the coil is carrying 1 milliamp current, the voltage drop across it is 50 millivolt and the galvanometer pointer is deflected to its full scale value. This also means that if we were to just use the galvanometer on its own as an ammeter, then the maximum current it can measure is limited to its current rating, which would be in milliamp range only. To expand the range, we connect a resistor RA in parallel with the coil. Because they are connected in parallel, the voltage across the ammeter is the same as the voltage across RA, which is the same as the voltage across the coil. However, the ammeter current divides among the parallel branches. When the current through the ammeter is at its full scale value, the current through the coil must be at its maximum current rating. This means that the current through RA must then be full scale current minus the coil current rating. This fact can then be used to work out the value of RA as shown here. Similarly, the galvanometer resistance can be found by applying Ohm's law to the galvanometer. The effective meter resistance is given by the parallel combination of RA and RG. This effective meter resistance of a real ammeter is typically a very small value in Ohm's, but it is not zero. Hence, the ammeter adds resistance to the circuit in series with the circuit element whose current is being measured. The percentage error defined as follows gives us a measure of how much the meter disturbs the current in the circuit. Ideally, we want the percentage error to be as low as possible. Note that in this video, we have not discussed the working principle of a galvanometer. If you are interested, this is discussed in the solving circuits with DC voltmeter video. This video also explains why we use digital multimeters in practice, but consider analog voltmeter and ammeter problems in first year engineering. The link to this video is included in the video description and also in the video end screen. Let us consider a simple example. Consider a circuit with three series resistors as shown. Suppose we are interested in measuring the current I. Using Ohm's law, it is very easy to show that the true current value is 1 amp. In order to measure this current, we must interrupt the circuit and connect an ammeter in series as shown here. 
the ammeter specifications are given. We can use these to determine the effective meter resistance as follows. When the current through the ammeter is at its full scale 10 milliamp value, the current through the coil must be 1 milliamp. This can then be used to work out the value of Ra as shown here. We can find Rg by applying Ohm's law to the galvanometer and Rm is given by the parallel combination of Ra and Rg. In order to work out the measured current, we must replace the ammeter connected in the circuit with a resistance having Rm value. Now again using Ohm's law, we can work out the measured value as shown. We can see that the measured current is quite different from the true value and this is also reflected in the percentage error which is quite large in this case. This is because in this example the effective ammeter resistance is 5 ohm and is quite comparable to the other resistances in series with it. Thus the ammeter disturbs the circuit by quite a lot. Note that in general the percentage error can be positive or negative. In this example it is negative because the measured value is less than the true value. To delve deeper into this issue of disturbance caused by an ammeter, let us consider the same example but with all resistance values changed to kilo ohm instead of ohm. We can solve this problem as before. In this case we can see that the same ammeter results in a percentage error of only minus 0.05%. In other words the measured value is much more accurate. This is because the effective meter resistance of 5 ohm is now much much smaller compared to the kilo ohm resistances in series with it. Thus the meter disturbs the circuit less. It is also instructive to verify the true value in LT spice. This is the same circuit constructed in LT spice. We can use a zero volt test voltage source to act as an ideal ammeter and measure the current. Connecting a zero volt test voltage source does not disturb the circuit. When we simulate and bring the cursor onto the test voltage source, we can see in the bottom left corner that the true current is 1 milliamp as expected. The direction of this current is from the positive to the negative terminal of this test voltage source. In LT Spice, it is well known that rotating a resistor by 180 degree will change the reference current direction through that resistor resulting in a negative current value. Thus bringing the cursor onto a resistor is not a reliable way to get LT spice to display the current values. For instance, if we check R1, we can see in the bottom left corner that the current is 1 milliamp as expected. But if we check R2, the current is showing as minus 1 milliamp. Rotating R2 will fix this issue and give the correct plus 1 milliamp value. Thus a reliable way to determine the current is to use a zero volt test voltage source to act as an ideal ammeter. If you are interested, a detailed discussion is provided in this video in this channel. 
A link to this video is included in the description below and also in the video end screen. Please pause the video now if you wish to go back and review any of the previous working or this simulation demo in order to consolidate your understanding. Next, let's consider an average or standard difficulty example from a circuit analysis perspective. We are interested in measuring the current in the center branch of a bridge circuit. Using circuit analysis, it can be shown that the true value is minus 250 microamp. The minus sign means that in reality, the current is flowing in the opposite direction to the one that is shown here. To measure this current, we interrupt the circuit and insert an ammeter into the circuit as shown. The ammeter specifications are given here. We can analyze the ammeter as before and obtain the effective meter resistance. The effective meter resistance is shown here. Finally, we replace the ammeter with its effective resistance and reanalyze the circuit to find the measured value. In this case, because the ammeter resistance is much smaller than other resistances in series with it, the percentage error is quite small, which is excellent. For the sake of completeness, the intermediate circuit analysis steps are shown here. Since we are interested in the current, the true value can be easily determined using mesh circuit analysis. The resulting equations can be solved using a calculator or Mathematica to show that the true value is indeed minus 250 microamps. Similarly, the measured value can be easily determined uh, using mesh current circuit analysis. In this case, the ammeter effective resistance introduces additional terms which are highlighted in red in the circuit equations. We can use LTSPICE to simulate and verify the true and measured values. When we simulate, we can see that the true value is minus 250 microamps and the measured value is minus 249.826 microamps and these values are visible in the bottom left corner of the screen. These values match our calculated values. Note that the zero volt test voltage source is an ideal ammeter. So we are modeling the practical ammeter using its effective resistance of 10 ohm. Finally, we consider a hard example. Consider the bridge circuit shown here. This circuit contains a current controlled current source. We are interested in measuring the current IB shown here. In this problem, the ammeter effective resistance is directly given. We can use any circuit analysis technique to analyze the given circuit and find the true and measured values. In this problem, uh, the percentage error also comes out to be very small, uh, which is excellent. Please pause the video now and work out the true and measured values for yourself to consolidate your knowledge. For the sake of completeness, 
the mesh current circuit analysis equations and mathematical solution for the true value is shown here. Similarly, we can use mesh current method to find the measured value. In this case, the ammeter effective resistance causes an additional term highlighted in red in the circuit equations. We can also use LT spice to simulate and verify the measured and true values. When we simulate, we can see that the true value is 225 microamps and the measured value is 224.953 microamps as expected. These values can be read in the bottom left corner in the screen and here we are modeling the ammeter using its effective resistance. In summary, in this video, we have looked at how to solve circuits with DC ammeter. Since an ammeter is designed to measure current, it must be placed in series with the circuit element whose current is being measured. We have seen how to design the ammeter and how to work out the impact of the ammeter in the circuit being measured in terms of the percentage error. The two videos referred to in this video are linked here. Please watch them to further your understanding. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to this channel.